Hi, I'm Ben Pollard from the Lewis and Clark State Historic Site. I'm standing here at the confluence viewing area from our site, where behind me you can see the Mississippi and Missouri rivers as they meet each other. Over along running north to south is the Mississippi River. And uh, over here behind me uh, this way, on the other side of that opening, is the mouth of the Missouri as it's entering in, dumping in all the water it's collected from across the Great Plains. Over here you also see a small channel entering into the river that's kind of copying the Riviere du Bois or Wood River Creek uh, where Lewis and Clark and their expedition uh, would have had their encampment over the winter from December of 1803 to May of 1804. And that's why we're here. Today we want to celebrate Departure Day. Uh, this is the day, May 14th of 1804, when Lewis and Clark are finally going to have their expedition go. They've been delayed, they've been stopped by weather, by politics, but finally they know that they can start off and begin their explorations. So on this day, Captain Clark is going to be in a good mood because this is the start of the expedition, but the weather isn't so great. Uh, we know it was raining all day and it's kind of wet as they're loading up all the final supplies into their boats, uh, but everyone is in really high spirits. And in fact, some of the neighbors, uh, White House says that they're from the uh, Goshen settlement nearby, come to see them off. So they've got uh, some fans here to cheer them on. Uh, and they're in a good mood because they finally get to get going after spending months in camp dreaming about this opportunity. They're only going to go for a few miles up the Missouri River. And that's because uh, they only leave at 4 p.m. This is a habit of Clark's. He always likes to leave kind of late in the afternoon, sometime in, uh, into the evening almost. And that's because he doesn't intend to go very far. This is uh, almost a trial run of sorts. This gets them moving upriver. But if they've forgotten anything important, if anything went critically wrong with the boats, they're not too far from their encampment. They can head right back if they need to. This is a really exciting day. Uh, a lot of these folks, this will be some of the new territory that they've never crossed along before. Some of the men had been just across the river, but in a few days, they're going to be in a place that none of them had seen before. And it's really hard to imagine uh, what these guys are thinking, what's going through their heads. And so rather than speculate, I figured I'd give you a sample of what some of these men are thinking. So in here, in my little journal, I've copied over some of the notes from these uh, uh, soldiers. I didn't want to go with the captains today. I'm actually going to go with what the enlisted men had to say. We're going to start with a letter that's a few weeks old. It's about a month old at this point when they set out on May 14th. This is actually from April, but this is a letter that Sergeant Ordway wrote to his parents talking about the expedition, what he expected to happen, and um, kind of his, his uh, excitement can be heard in this. So I'm going to read this to you. Honored parents, I now embrace this opportunity of writing you to once more let you know where I am and where I am going. I am well, thank God, and in high spirits. I'm now on an expedition to the westward with Captain Lewis and Captain Clark who are appointed by the President of the United States to go on an expedition through the interior parts of North America. We are to ascend the Missouri River with a boat as far as it is navigable, and then go by land to the Western Ocean if nothing prevents, etc. This party consists of 25 picked men of the Army and country likewise, and I am so happy to be one of them picked from the Army. And I and all the party are, if we live to return, to receive our discharge whenever we return again to the United States, if we choose it. This place is on the Mississippi River, opposite to the mouth of the Missouri River. This has been our winter quarters. We expect to be gone 18 months or two years. We are to receive a great reward for this expedition when we return. I am to receive $15 per month and at least 400 acres of first-rate land. And if we make great discoveries as we expect, the United States has promised to make us great rewards, more than we are promised. For fear of accidents, I wish to inform you that I left $200 in cash at Harkinson's, put in the interest of a substantial man by the name of Charles Smith in Cotmanership, which is where there are three more substantial men binding with him, and Captain Clark is bound to see me paid at the time and place where I receive my discharge. And if I should not live to return, my heirs can get that and all the pay that is due me from the U.S. by applying to the seat of government. I've read no letters since Betsy's yet, 
but I'll write next winter if I have the chance. Yours, John Ordway. What I like this one is you can see how excited he is that he was picked to help go on this expedition. But then at the very end, it's kind of tinged with that fear and doubt. There's a very real chance that some of the men on this trip are going to die. He realizes that. So uh, he's excited for the ex exploring. He's excited to see new things. Uh, everyone is a little hesitant, though, because they don't know if they're all going to make it back alive or not. So that's a letter uh, kind of leading up to before they leave on this expedition. Uh, there's another one after the expedition is over. This comes from Sergeant Gass's, Sergeant Patrick Gass's journals. And uh, we've not touched on it really in any of these videos yet, but Gass published his journals first. And uh, Lewis and Clark uh, said that some of it may have been taking some liberties with it. So take it with a grain of salt, but this is what he wrote uh, in relation to Departure Day, May 14th of 1804. On Monday, the 14th of May, 1804, we left our establishment at the mouth of the River Dubois, or Wood River, a small river which falls into the Mississippi on the east side, a mile below the Missouri, and having crossed the Mississippi, proceeded up the Missouri on our intended voyage of discovery, under the command of Captain Clark. Captain Lewis was to join us in two or three days on our passage. The Corps consisted of 43 men, including Captain Lewis and Captain Clark, who were to command the expedition, uh, part of the regular troops of the United States, and part engaged for this particular enterprise. This expedition was embarked on board a bateau and two pierrots. The day was showery, and in the evening, we encamped on the north bank, six miles up the river. Here we had leisure to reflect on our situation and the nature of our engagements. And, as we had all entered the service as volunteers, to consider how far we stood pledged for the success of an expedition which the government had projected, which had been undertaken for the benefit and at the expense of the Union. Our course of much interest and high expectation. The best authenticated accounts informed us that we were to pass through a country possessed by numerous powerful and warlike nations of savages, of gigantic stature, fierce, treacherous, and cruel, and particularly hostile to white men. And fame had united with tradition and opposing mountains to our course, which human enterprise and exertion would attempt in vain to, to pass. The determined and resolute character, however, of the core and the confidence which pervaded all ranks dispelled every emotion of fear and anxiety for the present. While a sense of duty and of the honor which would attend the completion of the object of the expedition, a wish to gratify the, the expectations of the government and of our fellow citizens with the feelings which novelty and discovery invariably inspire, seem to ensure to us ample support in our future toils, sufferings, and dangers. So I think you can uh, kind of notice a trend here. These guys are very excited. They're also pretty anxious. They've heard some rumors about what might be the river. Um, they've got a lot of speculation. And as you heard, uh, they thought they would run in some really fierce, treacherous, cruel uh, American Indians. Uh, that's very far from the case. Most of the folks that they meet along the way will be the only reason they get to go further. They get directions and food uh, and aid from these American Indians multiple times over. But this is what they're going in. They're very uh, anxious. They're a little worried about what they might see, but they're also incredibly excited for what's in store, of the, in, uh, what's in store for them on this expedition. So, looking back... We are uh, almost 200, or we are well over 200 years past the start of this expedition. And we know that the impact is going to be pretty great. These guys expected great things. And we now know the lasting legacy of the expedition. Uh, Lewis and Clark were able to chart a, a trip all the way to the Pacific Ocean and back, helping to make some claims for the United States later on. They made contact and some friendships with some of the American Indian tribes. They set up the, the very beginnings of some early trade networks. And they also mapped part of the United States that had not yet been mapped. So they left in a huge impact, and that all starts here uh, from the point of departure on May 14th of 1804. Thanks for watching, and you can check out our other videos on YouTube or Facebook, and you can check us out on our website as well at CampDubois.com.